What's going on, everybody? It's the Frost. We're back again for the Raw Review Results Show for the week. And I, I usually like to start at the top of the show, but I have to really talk about what just happened at the end of Monday Night Raw. We had what was supposed to be a Fatal 4-Way turn into a Fatal 5-Way because Seth Rollins came out earlier in the night and asked and pretty much like laid out why he should get a chance at, at to go to WrestleMania in the in, and get to the Elimination Chamber. So we had the Fatal Four way, the Fatal Five way, Seth Rollins, Bray Wyatt, Apollo Crews, Matt Hardy, and Finn Balor, and in a dusty finish. How? WWE even decided to go with this. Who booked the end of this match? The match was decent, the match was good, back and forth. You had all like Apollo Crews showing once again why he is one of the most underrated and underutilized talents on WWE TV. All around, you had the Matt Hardy and Bray Wyatt feud continuing in the match. To have the match end the way it did, I, I don't. I I just don't even know who booked this shit. I don't. I don't know who books this stuff anymore. How are you gonna have? This is just dragging this out another week. We're gonna come to Monday Night Raw next week, and it's going to be well. This match ended and ended like this. You had these two pin this person. We're gonna have a one-on-one -on -one match. One of these guys will go to the to the elimination chamber instead of just having a definitive winner this week because next week is the go home show. Let's just book it like this. I I don't even know where to go from here. This makes no sense why they even went with this. Basically, you had the match that came down to. Matt Hardy got hit with a twist, got hit on the outside with something by Bray Wyatt. Everyone else is inside. You have a Tower of Doom spot, which when back when before they started decided to do all these multi-man Fatal Four Ways and Fatal Five Ways in WWE, I, the Tower of Doom spot was something that was just really cool because it happens every so often, not every single month, every single week. It seems like every time they do a Fatal Four Way or Fatal Five Way, we see a Tower of Doom spot now, and it's just. Eh, it's not a, it's lost its luster pretty much. But you had in the Tower of Doom spot early in the match they got broken up by Bray Wyatt. This one you had Bray Wyatt on the top rope with Apollo Crews and you had Seth Rollins and Finn Balor come over, do the whole Tower of Doom spot. They both pin Bray Wyatt one, two, three, and they both think they won the match. And it just ended. Raw just ended. No Kurt Angle, no nothing. We just come to a dusty finish. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. You're just dragging this out one more freaking week for what? I don't get it. We have, just because Seth Rollins has nothing to do now because it has been confirmed that, that Jason Jordan will miss WrestleMania, which sucks for him. It really does. This guy was just finally coming into something that was going to actually work for him. And there's, like, nothing they can do about it. So, he's lost, so they have nothing for Seth Rollins. So, let's just throw him into this Fatal 4-Way. Make it a Fatal 5-Way because WWE likes their multi-man matches. And then, this match had to be written. I'm guaranteed this match had to be rewritten when they had when Jason Jordan went to have surgery. Because, I don't understand why they want this dusty finish whatsoever. The fact that you went from a Fatal 4-Way... To a fatal five way to now it's going to be a one on one with Seth Rollins versus Jake versus Finn Balor next week. The winner goes to the elimination chamber, which I'm pretty sure now they have no idea which one they want to go with. It's just it's such a headache, man. I have no idea who booked this. Who booked this? I don't know. Also on the show we had. Bailey versus Sasha Banks, which makes it even more and more likely that we're going to see Nia Jax versus um, Alexa Bliss at WrestleMania. If you're going to have Bailey versus Sasha Banks on free TV in a friendly competition match, after that match, I was hoping we would have saw maybe Sasha Banks show a little bit of heel tendencies, like say maybe something. But no, they both get destroyed by Nia Jax, and she put put he she. She cuts a cringy fucking, uh, cringe fucking promo, scripted all in hell, and uh, just Monday Night Raw, I don't know. I was fading in a half, half the time, but we get a dusty finish.
they did announce that that Ronda Rousey will sign officially since, you know, they didn't have her officially signed to WWE at the Royal Rumble. She will sign her Raw contract at the Elimination Chamber. So, you 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 have this woman come to the, the Royal Rumble, ha, not even under contract, and just have her ruin one of the biggest moments for this women's, so-called women's revolution. Yeah, that made all the sense of the world to me. Just have this woman come in and just ruin everything because WWE wants that big ESPN moment. I hope it was worth it, WWE, because you shoved it down our throats for weeks that the women's Royal Rumble was a big deal and you just threw it away in five sa in like five minutes. Not much else happened on this show, really. You had, let me see here. Yeah, not much else happened. I guess you had the Revival vs. Um, Dollar Club of Gallows and Anderson, which, who cares? Cena and, but, okay, so they had, the show started off with John Cena, who aims to put down the beast at WrestleMania, and Miz, of course, interrupts. I'm out here to face the truth. And the truth is, in two weeks, I have to win the Elimination Chamber match. I understand that comes with some mixed emotions, but the truth is, if I don't win the Elimination Chamber match for the first time in 15 years, I am not sure that I have a road to WrestleMania. So to all of those opposed of me winning at the Elimination Chamber, allow me to tell you my road to WrestleMania out loud. I have to survive the most unwinnable match in WWE history to earn an opportunity to face the most unbeatable champion in WWE history. For those not on my side, when you say it out loud, that sounds impossible. But whether you're on my side or you're not, you all know that I love making impossible absolutely possible. I will win the Elimination Chamber match. I will go on to make history against Brock Lesnar in the main event of WrestleMania. Maybe you've been spending too much time in Hollywood where you can't differentiate fantasy from reality. You think you're going to go on to main event WrestleMania and beat Brock Lesnar? You're the founding father of Suplex City. Understand that I am going to go on to main event WrestleMania because that's where this title belongs. I will be the first person to hold the Intercontinental and Universal Championship by beating Brock Lesnar. Statistically, you would have a chance. He could miss his flight, he could get food poisoning, he could be frozen in a block of ice. But if that match ever makes it into the ring, Miz, it most likely will be your last match. See, that's where you're wrong, John. The biggest mistake you made was trying to beat Brock Lesnar at his own game. I match up far better to Brock Lesnar than you ever did. See, I won't do the same things you do. I'll play to my strengths. I'll use my brain. I win in WWE because I do whatever it takes. I use whatever is at my disposal. I win because I do the things that other people won't do, other people can't do. I cross the lines that you won't cross. That's why I beat Roman Reigns for the Intercontinental Championship. And that's why I... A title that has been irrelevant most of the time that Miz has held it. And there was a big post that, there was like a big deal that he... Came in the second. He's in second for title combined days as a, as a champion. It's like who the hell cares? 
how many days you've held the Intercontinental Championship. Hell, I think Don Morocco's number one and he held the title, what, once or twice? So, you holding the title eight times means you lost it seven times. And once you lose that one, it'll be that you're an eight-time former champion. So, I don't care, and nobody should care, how many days you've held the title or how many championship mains you've held the title. It should be, have you put on good matches? Have you had good and interesting storylines for those matches? How have the feuds been that you've been in? Most of the times, it's been garbage. The only the, In the last three, four years, the, last, the only time The Miz has had a good intercontinental feud was with Dolph Ziggler right after the brand split. That was one of the best things him or Dolph Ziggler has ever done, and I will get into Dolph Ziggler tomorrow. That is going to be something I'll talk about tomorrow before we get into SmackDown's review. But Miz just, you just, like, no. I don't even care, like, the Intercontinental title on his shoulder, on his around his waist, needs to be gone. Hopefully, if they have Finn Balor win the one-on-one -on -one match next week at the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view, Miz and Finn Balor do whatever they can, and, um, what do I want to say? Whatever, whatever happens between those two, and it sets up a match between those two at WrestleMania, and he loses the Intercontinental title to Finn Balor, and Finn Balor has a title reign that should actually matter. I will beat Brock Lesnar in the main event of WrestleMania. You are certainly not afraid to run your mouth. And every once in a while, you find a weaselly way to back it up. I say The Miz versus John Cena. That is not enough. We're on the road to WrestleMania. We have to make this huge. The loser of the match enters the elimination chamber first. You don't think I know that the first person in the elimination chamber has the worst chance of winning? Why would I take that chance? Oh, and the Miz Taraj just attacked. So Axel and Dallas beat down on John Cena, and then John Cena, they could angle does come out and make the match, and they have their match. John Cena, of course, picks up the win after a double, uh, a super attitude adjustment off the top rope. This was a good back and forth match. There was a bunch of false finishes. Couple, John Cena got put in the figure four twice. Definitely um, played up on his um, on his on um, being like injured by the leg later on in the match. But you know the match ended pretty much when Miz went up to try and give John Cena a skull crusher finale off the top rope. Of course, that got reversed into a double super attitude adjustment, and John Cena wins. So that means. Miz is going to be the first person in the Elimination Chamber, which people are like, it, he's like, oh, the first person in, in the Elimination Chamber has the worst statistical odds of winning, so does the second. It's not like you sit out there for about two minutes as the number one, as, as the first person in the Elimination Chamber before the next person comes in. It's, it's just kind of dumb how they put that. Then you had... Welcome Matt Hardy cut a promo about how he's going to want to turn the um, Elimination Chamber into the, limit, the Deletion Chamber and just cuts a promo on the show, on his on the match tonight. They had everybody, minus of course um, Seth Rollins, because Seth Rollins came into the match later. And that was about it for Matt Hardy. You had Battle Club vs. The Revival. I missed this match somehow, like I... Coming up here, look on these things, and it says Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson versus the Revival. And I'm like, when did that match happen? I must have blinked or something. But the Revival pick up a win. Then we had Kurt Angle talking about WrestleMania and letting us know that Jason Jordan will miss WrestleMania. Seth Rollins comes out because he wants to be added to the Fatal Four Way to make it a Fatal Five Way. In two weeks, at the WWE Network pay-per-view, Elimination Chamber, Ronda Rousey will be signing her Monday Night Raw contract. Now the other news is, last Monday night when Raw went off the air, my son Jason Jordan and I went to a local medical facility where Jason had an MRI done to his neck. 
Jason was told he had to have, he'd have to have neck surgery. He had the surgery the following day, and he will be out of commission, and unfortunately, he will miss WrestleMania. You know, I come out here every single week, calm, cool, and collect, with a smile on my face, but I can't do it anymore. I'm going to talk to you tonight, not as the GM, but as a father. If any of you get any kind of joy out of seeing a WWE superstar get injured and risk WrestleMania, then you should be ashamed of yourself. I'm gonna have to agree with Kurt Angle on that one. I don't know like what every what people's deal is like. Oh, Jason Jordan's injured. Good, good, great. We don't have to see him anymore. What is wrong with people who think like that? Are you fucking kidding me? This dude bust his ass day in and day out, week in and week out, giving crappy ass storylines by the people in the back. He's trying to make the best as he best of it that he can, and you people are fucking happy that he's injured. What the fuck is wrong with people like like that? Just knock it the like people need to shut the fuck up. There were people chanting yes when he says that. Are you out of your fucking mind? Stupid ass motherfuckers who sit there and like, oh Jason's injured. Yay, we don't have to see Jason Jordan versus Seth Rollins at WrestleMania. The guy's doing the best he fucking can what they well for what they give him. It's not his fault he's given these stupid storylines. Hell, I don't know why they broke him away from um, from um, Chad Gable, that, like, for the word going around was that it was because women were cheering for him. Who gives a fuck? This guy was in a good position as a member of one of the best young tag teams that they had going, even though they fucked that up. How can anyone even think about being happy that Jason Jordan's injured? For anybody who is a so-called wrestling fan who finds joy in Jason Jordan being injured, Go fuck yourself and stop watching wrestling because you're just one of those cancerous people who does not need to be um, in the wrestling, in the IWC. So anybody who finds joy in any superstar getting injured and missing any sort of time, go fuck yourself. I know Jason Jordan might not be your favorite WWE superstar, but he is a human being and he is my son. And all I want is for you to wish him get better wishes on his return. That's all. Kurt, look, I, I'm sorry about Jason, man. Honestly, honestly, I, you know, I was pretty hard on him last week, but the truth is he's a good kid and he's in a tough spot. You know? I, hey, I should know. I, I've been there. You know, I, I, I tore up my knee. I had to forfeit the title and I missed WrestleMania. But missing WrestleMania made me realize the WrestleMania moments, they're not guaranteed. And you can't take that for granted, and that's why I'm out here, Kurt. WrestleMania is right around the corner. I don't have a title. I don't have a Money in the Bank contract to cash in this time. Hell, I don't even have a match at Elimination Chamber. When you came to Monday Night Raw as the general manager, you told me you wanted to be a, me to be a mainstay of this place. You wanted me to be a big piece of Monday Night Raw. Well, I gotta be honest with you, right now, I don't wanna be a part of Monday Night Raw. I don't wanna be a part of Monday Night Raw. I want to be Monday Night Raw. I want Brock Lesnar. I want the Universal Championship. And I want it at WrestleMania. But the only way I can do that is if I win the Elimination Chamber match. Let's take this second chance Fatal 4-Way match. Let's turn it into a fatal five-way and put me in the match. Well, in all honesty, 
It's not ultimately up to you. It's not up to me. It's up to them. Do all of you want me to give Seth an opportunity to make it to the Elimination Chamber? I think you have your spot. You and then, of course, he made the match. He added him into the match. We talked about it at the beginning of the show. But, again, they talked about Ronda Rousey signing her contract at the Elimination Chamber. First off, Ronda Rousey comes out not under contract, supposedly, which she even said later in that, like, to Ramona Shelburne at, on ESPN that she had not signed a contract with WWE yet. So, basically, you had somebody who was not a con contracted superstar come out at the Royal Rumble Ruining what was supposed to be one of the biggest moments in the women's evolution. And all for what? You couldn't just have her come out and sign her contract at the Elimination Chamber. And that be her introduction to the WWE? I, I, I don't know. I, I just, like, it's just... A lot of people are like, oh, I'm happy for her. I honestly don't care. I don't care what Ronda Rousey does. The WWE Women's Division right now on the main roster is awful. It's just poorly booked. They had Bayley versus Sasha Banks tonight. Last week you had Bayley versus Oscar. The week before that you had um, Sasha Banks versus Oscar. What are we gonna get? Mickey James versus Oscar next week. And we also had the women's. Um, we had Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville versus Mickey James and Alexa Bliss, who's trying to kiss up to Alexa um, to Mickey James. So she can actually have somebody in her corner at the Elimination Chamber. And oh yeah, Alexa Bliss actually wrestled for about two minutes in a match. I'm really surprised. She didn't do much. I think she was in for a second. Took maybe, I don't even think she took a bump. I think she did one or two moves. Tagged back in, tagged in uh, Mickey James again. And that was it. So is she trying to nurse an injury too? Or are they just keeping her reserved for the Elimination Chamber? I don't know. So that was your women's portion of the night. You had... Sasha Banks and Bailey go out there, put in an okay match. Banks, I was hoping they would put have Sasha Banks actually go out there and eventually like get a little bit more heelish. She did for a minute there after Banks that uh, Bailey started the match. She did come in, she did shove Bailey into the corner and just start hitting her with forearm forearm shots after forearm shots, but eventually that didn't work out. Bailey ends up winning the match with a Bailey to Bailey off the off the um top rope, which looks pretty much cool still. After the match, the two stand up like Bailey's celebrating. Sasha Banks stands back up. They stare down for a minute, like maybe something's gonna happen. Now they're teasing it. They're teasing it. They're teasing something that happened at the Elimination Chamber between these two, that's going to ultimately lead to a match at WrestleMania. But if the title's not on the line with Nia Jax versus Alexa Bliss being the most likely match, what's the point? These two need gold on the line if you want it to be as important as it should be. And of course, they're staring each other down. Bailey then pushed Sasha out of the way as Nia Jax comes out of nowhere and lays both of these guys out. Hits a Samoan drop on both of these women. Then afterwards, she... She's asked by um, Charlie Caruso why she would attack these two when she had nothing to do with this match. She's like, it, had, she, it has everything to do with her because she, these two faced, these two took Oscar to her limit more Sasha Banks did than Bailey last week. But only one of us can take not to break Oscar's streak, and you're looking at her. Basically, that. Oscar's undefeated streak is so big that they actually have usually have this by the numbers for the Royal Rumble. Where they give you all these facts, all these numbers for the Royal Rumble. Well, they got one for Oscar now, too. And a lot of these I did not know. Like, she's over 860 days undefeated. 200 and... 200, I think it's like, what was it? 200? We'll listen to it right here. Which they do have the Biden numbers. And it's like, that's a big thing. I'm hoping they're not just putting this Biden numbers out there this week. They'll ultimately have her lose next week. Or ne next Sunday. I just hope that's not what they're going with. Is they're going to have Nia Jax break her streak before WrestleMania? That would be stupid. October 7th, 2015. 
an undefeated campaign was born. If she locks those hands, it's gonna be over. Ladies of the women's division, grit your teeth. The Empress has arrived. And now, 860 days later, that empire lives on. 240 wins, zero losses. How do you defeat the undefeated? 34 different women across four continents and 11 countries have fallen victim to the Empress of Tomorrow. Eight of those have held women's championship gold and all were forced into submission by Asuka. This woman has not been pinned. She has not been submitted. With a two and a half year reign of dominance, making history has become second nature to Asuka. Becoming NXT Women's Champion and securing that title for a record 523 days, the longest championship reign of the modern era and seventh longest reign of all time. A reign that would still be ongoing had Asuka not voluntarily relinquished the championship when she joined the Raw roster. Asuka is like no one you've seen before. Asuka is the seventh superstar and first woman to be both a Survivor Series sole survivor and a Royal Rumble match winner, putting her in similar company. I didn't know that, that she was the seventh. That's one of that I didn't know was like, that's one of those ones that I didn't realize that she is the seventh person to do this, win the Royal Rumble and be a Survivor Series sole survivor. Randy Orton, um, Roman Reigns, and a couple other ones, which I'll tell you that in a second. So that was a nice little take, take pit. I like these little facts sheets that they put out there every once in a while for something as big as Oscar's winning streak as it is. ...as The Rock, Ric Flair, Randy Orton, and Roman Reigns. And in the women's Royal Rumble match, Asuka would continue building her legacy as she punched her ticket to WrestleMania by going through 29 women, 15 of whom were former WWE Women's Champions. Asuka is a history maker. There was never any doubt Asuka is going to WrestleMania. 860 days and counting, with no end in sight. Who can beat Asuka? We have never seen anything like Asuka. Dominant, fearsome, imposing, relentless, undefeated. Nobody has had the answer for knocking off Asuka. Two and a half years undefeated. If you think anybody is ready, you must be insane. When it comes to the Empress of Tomorrow, the numbers. So, will we see Asuka lose at lose her match, her, her undefeated streak. A lot of cool little numbers there, and minus one remains, her being undefeated first, her being a sole survivor, and a um, Royal Rumble winner with the likes of Randy Orton, The Rock, and Ric Flair. That's a big, that's just, that's just big company right there. That's three legends right there. Yes, Randy Orton is a legend to people who don't want to think he is, but he is a legend. So, just a nice little tidbit there. Oscar, 860, I guess you can say 861 now because she did not wrestle on Raw this week. And so we'll see where that goes. 200 and some wins and more and more to come. I don't know what the, like, I don't know where they go with, and by the way, when Oscar's, when Oscar's undefeated streak is over, she could retire the next day and she'd be a Hall of Famer just because of how she went from, January 2000, like October 2015 to whenever she loses her streak, she's a Hall of Famer already, and she's only been in the WWE for about two for about two and a half years. They had a little backstage segment with Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns walks up. They have some little they have a little banter back and forth, and then the bar shows up because. You have Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns lose their last chance to be champions against the bar. And you're going to have the bar come in and we're still going to have this little bit of feud between these guys. It has been the shield of any incarnation versus the bar since August. Do we really not have any tag teams to go up against the bar to get them away from Roman and Seth? Seriously. 
It is done. It is over. I am sick and tired of seeing the bar versus Seth Rollins or the bar versus Dean Ambrose or the bar versus The Shield or the bar versus Roman Reigns. Yes, Roman Reigns versus Se Sheamus later in the night. Just so over it. I do not want to see any more of this. It's just enough. Just enough of the bar versus any form of The Shield. Just enough of it. Move on. They lost their chance last week. Let's forget it. You had a backstage segment with Alexa Bliss and Mickey James, which Mickey James, like Alexa Bliss, trying to apologize for everything she said a couple months ago to Mickey James. Hey, partner. Don't hate partner me. What exactly are you up to? Why did you run down acting like my savior last week against Absolution? And why are we teaming up tonight against Sonya and Mandy? Well, actually, I asked Kurt to book this match. I'm sick and tired of these newbies acting like they can just run Monday Night Raw. Plus, I thought you'd want the payback after the attack last week. Oh, of course. But more importantly, I just... I want to clear the air between us. Oh, you do? Yeah. You know, a couple months ago, I said some things that I didn't You what? Called me old? Bought me to Pence. Gave me a walker. No? Any of those? Do you know? Yeah, I remember. What about it? Biscuit butt. Look, Mickey, I said those things about you because I was jealous of you. And you're a six-time champion. And not only that, you're a mother. And you look amazing. I just, I'm very impressed with how you're able to balance being a mother and a WWE superstar. Thank you. Now what do you want? Wow. You know, that was, that was me apologizing. I mean, I, I was the one that brought you back to WWE, but you know what, it's, it's fine. You know what, if Absolution works together in the Elimination Chamber, we're all screwed. Oh, are we? Oh, is that why you tried to weasel your way out of defending the championship at the Elimination Chamber? Mm, just last week. No? Yes? No. If Absolution wins the championship, they're just going to play keep away with the title. Every week it's going to be Mandy versus Sonya, Sonya versus Mandy, over and over and over again. Where do we fit in that equation? We don't. Oh, no. Okay, look. I appreciate what you did last week, I really do. It was very sweet of you. So fine, tonight, we can be a team, we're teammates, okay? But come Elimination Chamber, I am coming after that Raw Women's Championship. So you can play nice all you want, but you are buttering the wrong biscuit, honey. So, yes, they had a tag team match between Alexa Bliss and Mickey James versus Absolution. Mickey James and, and Alexa Bliss loses. Like, it was a short match. Mickey James did most of the work. Alexa Bliss tagged in one time, did like one move, tagged back in Mickey James. And then before she could tag in again, Alexa Bliss, like, Paige and Sonya Deville, um, pull her, like, distract her and then drag her down. Mandy Rose hits her finisher, whatever they're calling that, gets the win, nothing else. They do beat down Mickey James a little bit until um, Alexa Bliss comes in and makes the save, and that was that. Then you had Elias coming up next, and he has a Elimination Chamber Blues, and then Strowman comes in with his own instrument of fun. Now, do I need to remind you that I am the man 
that defeated John Cena and Braun Strowman in the same place at the same time, which makes me the odds-on favorite to win the Elimination Chamber, which I will. No, that's still going And I will go on to WrestleMania. Six men enter, but only one really leaves. It ain't gonna be the big dog, because nobody believes. And as for the Miz, should watch his step, maybe just stick to Miz TV. You remember those songs I wrote, Miz? Those weren't for you, those were for Maurice. I smash John Cena with a guitar. The only thing, the only thing John can't see is that the future is right here. Then we've got Braun Strowman. I get it, you raise your hands, say your name, but I'm gonna douse your dreams and gasoline and watch it go up in flames. Ladies and gentlemen, Braun Strowman. And all of a sudden, Braun Strowman gets his nice own little introduction and he's up on the stage with a microphone and one of those little stools he gets up, walks out of, the, uh, off out of the light, comes back with a nice huge cello. I don't know why. First off, um, Elias is is like one of the true heel like heat magnets that actually earn like good heat. The guy actually gets natural good heel heat. Definitely good at what he does. Could be a little bit more fine tuned in the ring, but is really good at on the mic and his songs are just funny half the time. Again, Ron Strowman comes out. Come like just it's like ladies and gentlemen, Braun Strowman. Lights come up of up on the stage, and Braun Strowman has a cello that he well he goes and grabs a cello and he tries to play it, not too well. <laughs> he tries to hold it like a guitar too. It's ought to be good. says he's gonna win but we all know that that ain't true you look at me boy when I'm singing cuz I'm not finished with you <laughs> you may not know it you may not realize but when this song's over you're gonna get these hands. <laughs> Comes down to the ring. He brought the cello with him. And Elias uh, trying to, yeah. and he goes right after you know, Strowman. Elias, and Strowman he enters the ring. And bit. Elias wasted little time, not allowing Austin's the like, monster oh, put my guitar to... down. He's like, no, I'm gonna uh -oh, grab my guitar. guitar. Uh -oh. Oh, no. That didn't work out for him. Oh that clubbing, that club to the chest. I, I, I'm sorry, right I just to the can't. heart of Elias. You got away with it twice. It's not going to happen again. But Strowman's about to reupholster Elias. And Elias gets a running power slam. Strowman for monster. Oh, power slam. You guys ready for Strowman's new album to drop? If you don't buy it, you're gonna get those hands. Oh, I'll buy it. I'll buy it. ten of them. Lions oh, no. is like Braun Strowman does a little pose. Lions is falling away up the yeah, ramp. Braun Strowman comes out of the ring, grabs his cello, puts it over his shoulder. Which, by the way, those things are not light. So the fact that this guy is just carrying this thing over his shoulder like it's a like it's a guitar is just oh my goodness. Let's go help Elias. It, it, 
I, I ain't helping anybody. He's not. And I, I don't know why they keep doing these shots. I don't. It's one thing for the one of those guitars, but this thing is oh, like no, quite no, a, no, I don't know why. God. He actually winds up Bro, and just... nails Elias in the back with the cello. And not the back part. He actually does the part with the strings. And just smashes that over Elias' back. Those are some of the dangerous um move, like dangerous weapon shots you can have. Those things can hurt you in more ways than one. Like if you just hit somebody the wrong way, you can bust a rib, you can bust a like bust them up and everything. I mean, we had we've had Finn Balor and Jason Jordan both, I believe, have their head bust open with a one of Elias's guitar. Why are they just so obsessed with these guitar and like guitar shots? I don't know what's up with WWE and these guitar shots. Moving on here, we had Sheamus versus Roman Reigns. It was another typical Roman Reigns match. Match ends with a Sheamus on the top rope trying to do something off the top rope. Gets hit with a spear in midair for the one, two, three. Not much new here. If you've seen a Roman Reigns versus Sheamus match, you've seen them all. Roman, like I said, in my, I put it in my notes. The Shield versus the Bar has been going on since August. It's time to move on. The Shield of Shane, like Seth, Dean, and Roman, no more against the Bar. This needs to be it. Have Roman go off and do something else. Have the Bar find somebody else to feud with. But I am so tired of seeing the Bar versus the Shield in any way, shape, or form. Yes, the tag team division is on Raw is the Ballot Club, the Revival, feuding with each other, and in the bar. That's it. That's it. Well, over in SmackDown, you have Usos, Chad Gable, and Shelton Benjamin, The New Day, The Bludgeon Brothers, Breezango, and Ascension. That's six tag teams compared to three? Yeah. Fatal 5-Way Elimination, uh, Fatal, I wish it was Elimination. Elimination would have made it a little bit better, but Fatal 5-Way winning gets last spot in the Elimination Chamber match. Rollins vs. Cruz vs. Wyatt vs. Balor vs. Hardy. So much going through this thing that it was kind of hard to keep trying to keep track of it. You've had, you had Twist of Fates and you had Side Effects and like Coup de Gras attempts. There was actually a point where like Matt Hardy was trying to pin Bray Wyatt and like, um... Finn Balor was on the top rope and hit a coup de gras on both of them on top of uh, Matt Hardy. Cool looking spot. Match ends with a Tower of Doom. Rollins and Balor pin Wyatt at the same time and that was the end of the show. Like, are you serious? I talked about this earlier. We are one, like, this is just WWE's lazy booking. They don't have anything for Seth Rollins. They don't know, they, they screwed up when they put the, um... Bray, the Finn Balor graphic up on the WWE website where it had all six members and Finn Balor was number six. They took that graphic down and they're like, well, we have to do something about this. Let's put, let's make this a fatal five way. Put Seth in here. Let's do a dusty finish. Next week, people will probably totally forget all about that and we can have Seth Rollins lose to Finn Balor. Or if they want to, they could put Seth Rollins in there instead of Finn Balor. I don't know. All I know is whoever wins that match needs to set up a program against the Miz for WrestleMania, where the six that person takes on the Miz and wins the Intercontinental Title, rescuing the Intercontinental Title from a heel who has had shitty ass booking from day one. It seems like since he's won the title the last few times, since he took the title off Dean Ambrose last year. The Intercontinental title has looked worse every single month, and it's just so boring. Other than that, that's Monday Night Raw for you. Before we get out of here, I will want to mention about Ivory being inducted into the Hall of Fame. Congratulations to Ivory. Much, much, much earned. She has, she was a pioneer, as they called her, on Monday Night Raw for the women's, so, like, the women's evolution. Let's, like, just leave it there. So... That was your Monday Night Raw review. We'll be back here for SmackDown tomorrow night. Nothing really happened on this show other than the controversy at the end and the fact that The Miz will be starting the match. It would not surprise me if the first two in the Elimination Chamber are The Miz and Roman Reigns so they can have this big deal how Roman Reigns started the match and finished the match as you're as, and going into WrestleMania. It would just, it just makes sense to me that that's what they're going to do. 
Miz versus Roman in the first is going to be the first two in the elimination chamber, and that's going to be that. Nothing else. Ha not much else happened. And make sure to follow me on Twitter at the Front. Find me on twitch.tv slash the Front zero eight. I'm on there every single day. And make sure to hit that subscribe button. Comment down below on what you thought about Monday Night Raw, which to me was just boring as can be. Like I'm sitting, I was sitting here and just like. And then the dusty finish happened, and I'm like, why? Where am we supposed to go from here? I don't know. But I'm going to get out of here. I'll see you guys tomorrow for SmackDown Live, where we get we get the winner of Dolph Ziggler versus Baron Corbin. We'll go to Fastlane in March, which I will talk about Dolph Ziggler tomorrow and my thoughts on some rumors about his new contract. Until then, my name is The Frogs, and I am getting out of here. Have a good one.